Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. We gotta look at verse 18 through 22. 18 through 22. It should be a familiar verse to many people. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me better? Amen. It's good to be saved. <laughs> okay. For some of you, right in front of the thing, right? You could, you know, you could listen to it like this. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Can you hear me? Nathan. So it was funny when we were singing. You know, Eunice, she's a young girl. She's learning. I mean, she could be handful. She could be not listening. But however, when she was singing, you know, it was actually pretty good. Amen. And while I was playing, I saw her. And she might not know the words, but she was like this. She was like, ah. <laughs> and then her, her hands were moving like this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if she couldn't hit the note or, you know, she wanted to. But hey, you know, praise God. I think when God sees you guys praising him, that's how probably he feels. He sees his little children just praising him. And even though you and I, we're not perfect and we fall short of his glory many, many times, like the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. When he sees the glimpses of you and I praising him, you know, how joyful do you think the Lord is? That's why it is very important for you guys to give your heart out when you praise God. It might not seem like, you know, a big deal, but when you are praising him, it's probably like the most important hour. Why? Because he sets up everything else. When you praise him with all of your heart, when you listen to the word of God, you listen to it with all of a heart. When you sing with half-heartedness, you're going to listen to the word of God, half-heartedness. When you put all your effort in that just short period of time, whether it's 15 minutes, whether it's two or three hours, which, you know, like in the past camps that we had, you put all that in, when you try to listen or when you do listen to the Word of God, it becomes so much sweeter. You know, when you hear like all these preachers, they go out trying to hear strong preaching. Do you know why? Because they yearn for it. For some of you, if you can't even give all your heart to praising God with all of your heart, shouting, hollering, letting yourself go, then how do you expect to get something? Or how do you expect to get everything out of this? Everything. You know, we compare a lot of Christianity to some kind of sporting event. And we have a lot of, you know, sports fanatics in here. You know, people love football. People love basketball. People love baseball. People love everything. But when they are out at the stadium, they shout, scream, holler. Oh, and when the team is losing, they're down by two points, and they make a three-pointer to win the game. You scream your lungs out. Yeah. And for that moment, you're so happy. Yeah. I mean, you talk about it next day at your work, oh. with your friends, oh. families. You talk about it years ago. You're like, well, hey, man, that Christmas game, I remember I was there like 20 years ago. But when it comes to the Word of God, when it comes to your salvation, it's lacking. It's lacking in your life. When are you ever excited? Hey, come here. Ow. <laughs> you know what? I was so happy when I got saved. It was better than, you know, you know touchdown. It's better than three-pointer. It's better than a... Grand Slam. Man, I can't even explain it to you. When they hear that, they could see the excitement. They're like, man, I want, you're crazy, but I want what you have. Man, when I'm going through hard times and my life is dark, when COVID is happening and when I'm depressed, I want to kill myself. 
when he when they could see someone like that when they could see that he knew whether it's through virtual whether it's through your phone whether it's through meeting they're going to be blessed that's where this message comes in let's look at the verses verse 18 and jesus walking by the sea of galilee saw two brethren simon called peter and andrew his brother casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Can we have... Brother Tom, pray for the message. Yes, sir. Heavenly Father, I pray that this week wash away all of the sins of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that cool. the bugs away will keep from the demonic attacks of day. I plead the blood of the protection of all the people here, Lord. Let us not be distracted by any thought or any attack, Lord. And I pray that you'll minister to all of us in a way that only you can, Lord. And I pray that you'll use Brother Jay as a vessel. Yes, sir. And, uh, shove him out of the way, Lord. Use him only as a vessel and teach us and show us what you want us to hear from the word, Lord. Amen. Amen. Title of the message is Do It Immediately. Do It Immediately. The problems with you and I is that we always tend to linger. The, one of the words that define humanity, you and I, is a word called procrastination. We always tend to wait until the last minute. Whether it is homework, whether it is planning, whether it is you know, doing anything, whether it is doing something for God, we wait until last minute. When you look at the story here, when you see Peter and Andrew, right? Jesus Christ said, follow me, and they immediately went. When you listen to a preaching, when you read the Word of God, when Holy Spirit of God convicts you, you have to do it immediately. Oh, it's not about this, you know, this secular, analytical, educational thing where you have to weigh the evidence, right? You have to think more and more, and then I'll make my decision tomorrow morning. It's not like that. When it comes to Christian life, when you're convicted, you do it right away. Number one thing is that when you're convicted of your sin, you have to confess your sins right away. There's reason why some of you, your faces lack some joy from the past. I mean, I don't know why. I don't know what you go through in your life. It might be tough. It might be something that you can't really share with people. You might just say, you know, it's a, it's a just pray for me. However, a lot of times those things do happen. It's because of sin. Because you and I, we're not Job. We're not that righteous. We're human beings saved by grace of God. You know, we're sinners. And then we commit a lot of sin. However, when we do know that we're committing sin, when we know that we have committed sin, how often do you get down on your knees right away, pouring all of your heart out and really confess your sins to the Lord and get right with the Lord? It's not about waiting until the end of the night. You know, that's something that you and I are mistaken because you, you've been preached so many times. Pray to God in the morning. It starts out really well. Don't get me wrong. You have to do it. Before you go to sleep, do it. Don't get me wrong. You should do it. Yeah. However, yeah. during that time, you and I commit a lot of sin, yeah. right? What do you do about it? Do you immediately take care of it? You're like, oh, I'm so scared, you know. It's like this. You have a cancer. If you knew about that cancer, are you going to wait until tomorrow? Are you going to wait two weeks from now, three weeks from now, and you're going to deal with it? No. If you know about it, you got to take care of it right away. You're going to start calling the doctors. Like, you know what? I'm going in today. I'm going into emergency. I'm going into urgent care and take care of it. So when it comes to your sin problem, how often do you resolve it immediately because if you don't that thing that leaven is going to just really really you know stop you from really getting closer to God there's a reason why many of 
person sitting in this room does not have that super, super deep relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we do things like robotic way. However, it's lacking. Why? Because you don't pour it out from your heart. And when you love someone or when you love something, you do it immediately. Think about it. When there's a, when there's a favorite show on TV and it's about to play on TV in like a minute, it starts at 7 o'clock, and right now it's 6.59. You're going to do everything you can to watch that show. However, when it comes to spending time with the Lord, you always wait. Lord, and I was supposed to, you know, spend time with you at 7 o'clock, but, you know, let's, let's push it back to 7.30. Let's push it back to 8.30. Let's push it back to 10 o'clock. And before you know it, you're sleeping, and you wake up in the morning. Lord, I confess my sins, you know, not spending time with you. But it's a repeated action. When you see, you know, Andrew, Peter, John, I mean, they just left. Can you imagine? I mean, I know it's not going to happen to any of you guys immediately because you're not ready, right? However, if, if the Lord goes, okay, drop everything, it's time for you to go witness and be a missionary to Zimbabwe to Ukraine, you know, to Siberia, to Japan, to anywhere. I mean, will you actually drop everything immediately and follow him? First of all, don't kid yourself that Lord's going to ask you to do it tonight because you're not ready. God never gives assignment to anybody who has not taken steps along the way. Before you take big steps, you have to take little steps, right? So some of you guys have aspiration to the great and mighty things for God. It's just an aspiration. It doesn't show in your actions. You're like, God, ah, I could die for you. I want to win this million people for you. Ah, uh, forget about Billy Graham, you know? I'll do more greater things for you. I'm not going to compromise and stuff. Yeah, right. You are the first person who's going to compromise. You're the first person when time gets tough. You know, you're going to cuss. You're the first person when time gets tough. You know, you forget about watching, you know, Pastor Gina's videos, you know, Pastor Randy's videos, and Pastor Kim's videos, and you're like, man, time is too tough. Lord, you haven't blessed me enough for me to spend more time with you. Man, you are very, very entitled as a Christian. Man, that's the wrong way of thinking, brethren. If you hear and God is convicting you tonight, tomorrow, throughout the camp, you have to take action immediately. If Holy Spirit is telling you, hey, what's wrong with you? Praise with all of your heart. Don't you see? The word of the hymn says, you know, His blood washed away all your sins. I mean, can't you just get excited? Start running the bases? Can't you shout and holler for what He has done for you? When you think about the heaven, when you think about what the Lord did for you, saving you from eternal lake of fire burning in hell, man, your smile should be coming. You should be hollering. You should be thanking God. Amen should be everywhere. Instead of just two people. Instead of just three people. Instead of just preachers. Everybody is saved in this place from what I understand then everybody has the Holy Ghost then everybody's being convicted then everybody should be standing and showering and praising God however it's not happening then why because you have a sin problem you are not immediately resolving all your sin problem turn your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 2 1 Peter chapter 2 Brethren, tonight, if you have anything, especially sin, world, flesh, the devil stopping you from praising God, getting right with the Lord, you have to confess your sin immediately. You have to get that out of the door, and you have to come back in and really get right with the Lord. And, I mean, think about it. Look at the nature. Look around you. This is God's creation. I mean, it's so cool right now. I mean, it's, it's, I mean can't you be thankful enough? I mean, this is the best setting for you to get right with the Lord. Yeah, Lord. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, 
as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. You have to lay aside all your sin problems. Don't carry it with you. We're not playing football here. You're not going to take that sin, and you're not going to score a touchdown with it. Yeah, you will score a touchdown for the devil. You go out there, and with that sin, and you'll be like, hey, I've done so great. And you know who's clapping? Devil's clapping. Yeah, devil's like, yeah, you've done great. You've done great, son. You've done great, daughter. You've done great. Ha, 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 laughing at you. Man, you know, I think last thing I want is being mocked by the devil. And when you're being mocked by the devil, how do you think the Lord's feeling? And the Lord's like, man, you're my child. I die for you. And you keep on disappointing. Man, have you ever thought about how much you're disappointing the Lord each time you fall short? I mean, think about it. You know for sure that you're not supposed to commit that sin. Whether it's anger, whether it's envy, whether it's whatever sin, because you've done it in the past, but you do it again. Have you seriously thought about how much of a disappointment you are? You know, when it comes to human relationship, father and children, it's pretty special, mother and children. More than getting beaten up by them as you grow older, thinking that you've disappointed them, and that hurts the most. Yeah. Especially when your parents, and you know they love you, and they're like, son, daughter, you know, I'm very disappointed. And they don't, that's it, that's the end of the conversation. Yeah. They don't want to get into it. They don't want to expound upon it. They don't want any details. They were so disappointed. And you broke their heart. Mm. And you remember those moments. Nobody's perfect in this room. Think about that feeling. Just imagine that feeling. Just relive that feeling and multiply by 100. Multiply by 1,000. That's how much you are giving heartache. How, how much you're breaking God's heart. You're like, God's almighty, all-powerful, omniscient. But He has personality. He can feel. And you could disappoint Him. Man, that's the last thing I want to do. last thing I want to do is disappoint my loving Father. last thing I want to do is disappoint my Savior who shed His precious blood. He did everything. And at this moment, immediately, you have to solve your sin problems. It doesn't matter if it has been going on past week. It doesn't matter if it has been going on for a month, for a year, for years. But this is the moment where... Just like when Jesus called his disciples, drop it and follow me, you have to drop it and follow him. You got to like drop it on your knees. You know, you got to have opportunities. During that time when the altar comes, or even right now, you got to like, man, Lord, how foolish was I? How sinful was I? How many times have I broken your heart not realizing it? I need to get right with you. Man, it's going to be a whole new day. It's going to be a different night. It's going to be a different week. And the words that you read in the Word of God and the sings, I mean, songs that you sing in those red hymn books and white hymn books, it's going to really touch your heart. Every word, every word is going to be special to you instead of you know, just few words here and there, instead of flashily getting excited like Calvary Chapel thinks. No, this one is really spiritually you're excited praising God. There's no fleshly feelings involved. You truly, just like, you know, David danced for the Lord, you truly want to dance for the Lord, right? I don't want you to stand up and doing breakdance moves, but, you know, <laughs> you're just going to start jumping and hollering. And you know why? Because you really, truly appreciate and are thankful that, man, Lord, you've done so much for me. I want to shout for you. I want to be like, thank you, Lord! Saving me from hell. Thank you, Lord, for your precious blood. Thank you. This life is but short. You're coming back soon. I have something to look for. Man, and then you're like, man, your, your blood is pumping. And the pastor Gina's running down already. And then, you know, Brother Gorski is, you know, 
I don't know, but Brother Gorski is like, you know, Brother Gorski is Brother Rendo on his back, you know, and they're running. Wow, and then everybody's right now filled with the Holy Ghost. And you are going to, it's not, you know, we use feeling, you know, in a, such a cliche way, but you're going to feel it. You're going to experience it, and you're going to know it immediately. Wow, this is how to praise God. Man, this is how to really enjoy worshiping God, right? These young ones. They don't know anything when they look at you because they see a dead tree. Oh. They're like, oh, I'll sing like this, just like you. I'll sing like this, just like you. I mean, some of you, like your head's never up. I don't know if you have a neck problems or whatnot. I mean, you're like, you're just like this, singing. And I, I don't know about you. When times are tough, there's a lot of proverbs say, look up, right? And you look up, right? I don't know if you're going to get a lot of blessing by just looking down like this. Yeah. And it's, not, it's not songs that you're not unfamiliar with. Many of the songs that you know it by heart. And, you know, we have this. But you know what? Beyond this, we have this, right? We have, we have heaven on top of us. You're going to be looking at it. Especially people sitting there, you can look at it that way. People sitting there, you can look at it that way. Man, you're going to really praising God. And you'll be like, wow, thank you, Lord. You know, like, hallelujah, hallelujah. And then you're going to be just running up and down. And you know why? Because you're going to make your action immediately. You're not going to wait. You're not going to be that person anymore. Like in a classroom, you wait until someone else asks a question and you start asking. You're not going to be that person. You wait until Pastor Gina starts running and you start running. No, you're not going to do that. Why? Because you're convicted. You know why? Because you're so thankful. Because you know why? You really want to praise God. You know, Brother Josh would come out and lie down on his, you know, belly and just praise God. And then, you know, man, you could be the next Brother Josh on your belly. Why? Because maybe that's how you're going to bless God like that. Right? Like, you have to do it immediately. You know why? Because if you let that moment go, just like a lot of opportunities, you're going to lose it. How many of you guys regretted something in your life because you did not take action immediately? Many, many times, right? Whether, it's, whether it comes to education, whether it comes to you know, work, whether it comes to especially witnessing. Think about it. How many times do you know of a person that you are always praying to God, Lord God, please give me opportunity, opportunity. He has given you a lot of opportunity, but you keep on praying for opportunity, opportunity. Did not make a move. Did not give a track or witness to them, and they disappear from your life. Whether they passed away, or whether they moved away, or whether they just disappear. Your blood, their blood will be on your hand. You know that, right? I mean, think about the book of Ezekiel. Their blood will be on your hand. I mean, I don't know about you. I don't like blood. I, mean, I don't. I don't know. Maybe some of you guys like blood. You know, your cuckoos. But, you know, but think about it. Because you did not do it immediately. Because you and I both know. Because the Holy Spirit of God is leading you, convicting you. Go do it right now. But you stop and you're, you always try to reason with the Holy Ghost. You try to reason with God. You know, as lawyer over there, Caleb, he'll attest to it. You could reason about anything. You could just say no offense, but, and then you could just keep on talk about it, talk about it. You could do it forever. Amen. During that time, you drop the ball, you lose that person, and God forbid they're burning in hell. God forbid you, because of you, they have to face eternal lake of fire because you did not do it immediately. I mean, a lot of times it's not even immediate, immediate. Why? Because God gives you enough chances, second chance, third chance, fourth chance. So it has become multiple immediate, multiple immediately. Man, if you had 100 immediates in your life, you better do it immediately now. How much more immediately do you, are you going to wait? And it comes down to also brethren, right? Being example to your brethren. You're like, uh, we have a new brother at our church. And Holy Spirit go, go immediately, go talk to that person. 
make him feel welcome, you know, you know show brotherly love. They're like, ah, oh, no, I have to see how they behave first. I have my own cliques. I have to see if they fit us, right? You know, I have to see if they look at me and say hi to me first, you know. I'll never say hi to anybody first, right? right? Some of you guys, you better change your attitude. Like, unless they say hi to me first, I never say hi. What's wrong with you? I mean, do you want Lord, Lord to be like that to you? Like, well, I mean, you, you'll be at a very, very bad place right now. So, if you were to see a new brethren, if you were to see brother in need, move immediately. And it doesn't stop at brethren. It, comes, it, it includes pastors and pastors' wives. They're human beings, right? Man, pastors' wives go through a lot. More than you could ever imagine. You know, I mean, I, I live with Pastor Kim and Mrs. Kim. That's why I could tell you from inside. You know what they have to go through? Pastors are pretty strong. I look at Brother Gorski over there and, you know, Brother Jean over there. Just looking at them, they look rough. Especially Brother Gorski, right? <laughs> They're like, you know, nothing's going to deter him, right? But behind them, there are Mrs. Right? No, Mrs. Gorski, Mrs. Kim, right? And future Mrs. Kim. Can you imagine what they go through? I mean, do you ever immediately reach out to them, say a few encouraging words, a few, you know, words that will make their day? They're human beings. Like, David. if I see, like, you know, say David is down, I'll be like, come on, David, what's going on? You know, let's pray about it, you know, like his schooling situation. You know, it gives encouragement. You look at, like, pastors and you look at them like robots and you're like, ah, they know what they do. I mean, you know, God takes care of them. You know, they don't need any of our, you know, encouraging words, prayers. They're, they get it by themselves, you know. They get plenty from the Word of God. You know. In a perfect world, yeah, but they're human beings. Immediately, if your heart tells you, if Holy Spirit leads you, say a word, like Josh, right? He's going to Amazon, right? I don't know, how many of you guys ever gave him an encouraging word about going to Amazon, right? I mean, his heart is there for lost people. Man, even the few words you say, man, I want to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. Man, that's go, that goes a long way. I mean, if you don't know what to say, at least say, you know what, Pastor, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for your ministry. You know how much of a blessing it is to them, right? I mean, after preaching, not every Sunday to Pastor Jane, I don't want his hat to get big, right? Like, but, you know, thank you for your preaching, Pastor, right? You know, I, I mean, it goes a long way. Why? Because you have that Philadelphia love. You have that brethren, brotherly love inside of you. God has instilled in you, especially after you got saved. Yeah. You're going to see each other for all eternity. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I know Brother Randall. I mean, like, show some love, right? Yeah. Your lack of showing love is stopping many of the brethren from growing. Ooh. It's discouraging them. You know, we don't use too many, we don't want to be softies like Joe Austin or Calvary Chapel or like those crowd. However, as a Bible believer, I think you need most love. Why? Because you're kind of grown up to be like a robot. Love, you don't need to be affected by love. But you know what? Love needs to be central theme of your life. It, your charity. Show some charity towards each other. And immediately, I'm, I'm telling you, you know, as a person who lived a you know, longer life than most of you guys and gone through many of the experiences that you're going through, when Holy Spirit of God convicts you to show, to show some love to brethren and you do it, you'll be blessed, other person or family will be blessed. But when you don't do it, unfortunately, bitterness builds up. Unfortunately, Something stopped you from doing that, show charity to the other person, and there was an issue. Then, what can you do immediately? If you wronged the brother, if you know someone wronged you, you and that brother or sister have to get it right. Immediately, you have to resolve that issue. You might be like, I don't know. I'm like the nicest guy. I don't know who would ever hate me. You probably, a lot of people hate you the most, right? Well, you pray. 
there a long time ago when we were having camps at a rat pack. I mean, not rat pack here, but we had a rat center. So this camp center in Valley Center, we had a lot of rats running around, literally. I mean, that's why we're not there anymore, but there were a lot of rats. But we had, you know, Brother Del Grande preaching, and, you know, he preached the message, and, you know, everybody was getting right with the Lord, and every, people were going up to each other and actually, like, you know, confessing sins to each other, you know. And there were a lot of tears, but, you know, joyful tears, and people were getting right together with the Lord. If you need to get right with anybody here or people who aren't here, but in the congregation, you have to get right with the Lord and with them immediately. Don't wait. If you wait, it's only going to get hard, harder. And like those rocks, man, it's going to be hard to break. So when the ground is fertile, at least for now, you have to immediately resolve it. Once you immediately do what the Holy Ghost tells you to do, that is the best feeling in the whole wide world. <laughs> I, I tell you guys this many, many times. You go to a gas station. There are a lot of people there. And you're pumping gas. And it's going to take about 5 to 10 minutes. You have a lot of tracks in your car. Yes, sir. Holy Spirit is telling you, go, pass them out tracks. You do it. You're like, man. Lord, you know, I'm not haughty, but, you know, I'm glad I listened to you. Man, when you don't do it, you feel kind of dirty. You feel like you, you, you showered in gasoline. And like, man, why am I like this, you know? When Lord, the Lord did everything for me, I mean, he shed his precious blood. He died on the cross for me. He went through all the shame in the world you could ever imagine. And he died for me. I can't even do that little thing for them. Am I afraid that they're just going to say no? I mean, Lord went through everything. When you do it immediately, in times like that, you're going to grow. That's when you take that step. Listen to that immediate conviction. You're going to become a better Christian. You're going to become a better brother, better sister, better husband, better wife, better preacher, better everything. You strive to be the best Christian you can be. Amen. Then it's got to start right now. It's got to start immediately. Let's go to the Lord in prayer.